The movie revolves around a sensitive and meek high school teacher named Andy Campbell. He teaches English at Roosevelt High School. It's the last day of the school year, and the senior students are going wild, pranking their classmates and teachers. A student takes Campbell's reserved parking spot, but the latter is too much of a pushover to do anything about it. On the other hand, the school's history teacher, Ron Strickland, is the most feared man on the campus. He enters the hall, calling out two students for removing a prized bat from the school's trophy cage and replacing it with a computer to watch adult movies. Strickland then makes the students put the bat back on the cage and leave. It's then revealed that the school board is planning to lay off teachers to make budget cuts. As a result, the atmosphere is tense in the staff room. The teachers are worried over their performance evaluations scheduled for later that day, which will determine their future in the school. Campbell in particular is fretting as his wife Maggie is expecting their second child. Next, a teacher who has worked for the school for more than 22 years arrives and reveals that he's just been fired from his job. Upset, he plans on stealing school property. But when disciplinarian Strickland suddenly arrives, the teacher gets scared and changes his mind. Later, Campbell is pranked in his class by a student who draws a vulgar picture on the board. Campbell tries to talk some sense into the boy, but the latter plays more pranks on him, which makes Campbell a bigger laughingstock. Shortly after, the school's guidance counselor, Holly Grossman, pulls him out of the class and informs him that his job might be safe, as the administration has already fired the other English teachers. Later, Campbell gets a call from his wife, Maggie, who reminds him to show up for their daughter's talent show later in the afternoon. Suddenly, Campbell hears strange noises coming from the bathroom, so he quickly hangs up the call and inspects. To his dismay, he finds a student watching adult videos and doing illicit things. He asks the boy to dress up and leave, but the latter refuses and continues to pleasure himself. Having had enough, Campbell starts yelling at the boy, and this attracts the attention of the drama teacher, Miss Monet. When she catches Campbell in the awkward position, she assumes that he is a pervert who is watching a student pleasure himself. However, Campbell brushes it aside and heads to his class. On his way, he's stopped by Strickland, who asks for his help in setting up the AV equipment in his class. Campbell declines to help as he's getting late for his own class, but when Strickland saves him from a student's paint prank, he changes his mind and agrees to help. It turns out Strickland is trying to play a video on a VCR, but the device is getting turned off automatically after working for a few seconds. Campbell quickly figures out that a student named Neil is playing a prank on Strickland by using a remote app on his smartphone. When Strickland learns about it, he takes Neil's phone and smashes it against the board. Strickland then resumes the video, but Neil borrows a phone from another student and continues the prank. This infuriates Strickland, and he rushes out of the classroom before returning with an axe. The students run away in fear as Strickland swings down on Neil's desk and chops it to bits. The school's principal hears about the incident and calls both Strickland and Campbell into the office. Before facing the principal, Strickland warns Campbell against snitching on him. However, when the principal threatens to fire both if they don't tell him clearly about the incident, Campbell caves and throws Strickland under the bus, resulting in him getting fired. Enraged about the betrayal, Strickland challenges Campbell to a fight later that day after school. Soon, the word about the two teachers fighting spreads like wildfire throughout the school. The students use this opportunity to spread rumors about Strickland to make Campbell pee his pants. Some say that he's an ex-cop, while others claim that he used to serve in the Special Forces. Holly and other teachers are sure that Strickland is going to finish Campbell with one punch. In the next scene, Campbell tries to do what he can to stop the fight from happening, but without success. Meanwhile, Miss Monet approaches Strickland about the fight and she advises him to attack Campbell with a knife. She says she wants to see Campbell get hurt because she thinks he's a pervert. After nothing works, Campbell talks to Neil and requests that he take his word back on the classroom incident. 
Neil agrees, but he demands a MacBook Pro in return. Desperate, Campbell agrees to fulfill his demand and rushes to an Apple store. However, there he runs into his wife and daughter Allie. Seeing Campbell in the market during school hours, Maggie assumes that he's gotten fired and starts panicking. She wonders if he got fired because he doesn't know how to stick up for himself. Campbell feels slightly insulted and he clarifies that he still has his job. He also gives her the MacBook, passing it off as a surprise gift for her. Ali then reminds him again about the talent show before leaving with Maggie. Meanwhile, Campbell buys another MacBook and gives it to Neil. The two then meet the principal and tell him that the incident was made up to convince him to give Strickland his job back. It works, and Strickland gets his job back. However, when Campbell calls him to tell him about the latest development, Strickland gets more upset because he didn't discuss it with him before going to the principal. Hence, he tells Campbell that the fight is still on. Strickland says that he wants to teach Campbell a lesson because he wants the students to learn that actions have consequences. With no other choice left, Campbell calls 911 to report Strickland, but the operators laugh at him for being afraid of another teacher. Later, he has a breakdown in his classroom, but the pranksters still don't spare him. They put a rope around his feet and use a horse doped up on meth to drag him out of the class before spraying him with paint. Campbell finally gets fed up with being the nice guy and decides to set Strickland up to go to jail by planting narcotics in his bag. In the next scene, he contacts Neil and buys a molly from him. On his way to plant them, he runs into the principal and the latter tells him that his evaluation has been scheduled at 2.15 right before Ali's show. Campbell tries to change the time but the principal refuses to budge. Campbell then plants the narcotics in Strickland's class before alerting the cops. The police arrive and check for the narcotics, but the sniffing dog fails to detect anything, prompting them to leave. Campbell then learns that dogs can't actually smell Molly, so he steals a joint from Holly and rushes to Strickland's class to lure the cops back. However, there he runs into Strickland, who has learned what he's up to. Furious, Strickland threatens him with an axe, but the latter quickly lights the joint, attracting the cops back. After taking the campus security guard's statement, the cops arrest both of them. Later in the cell, Campbell blames Strickland for their predicament and tries to get him further into trouble with a much larger and dangerous inmate. Campbell lies to the man that Strickland was talking shit about him. He tells him to look out for a nodding signal, saying that it's an invitation for a fight. Campbell then goes over to Strickland to instigate him against the inmate, but he learns that Strickland wants to call off the fight. He says that he doesn't want a battle because Campbell is not man enough to fight. Campbell is taken aback, and when he tries to clarify if the fight is really off, Strickland nods bringing the big inmate over. Strickland realizes that Campbell set them up, but he still takes on the inmate and holds him in a chokehold, telling Campbell that the fight is back on. A cop then comes over to inform them that the molly found in Strickland's possession turned out to be an aspirin before releasing them. It's 2 p.m. and Campbell quickly rushes to school for his evaluation. There he learns that Holly and the others have already gotten fired, Campbell is then forced to wait outside for his appointment. As time passes by, he grows impatient and eventually forces his way into the principal's office, only to realize that the school board is actually passing time listening to the superintendent's vacation stories. The principal then tells Campbell that they've fired enough teachers so he can keep his job. However, Campbell isn't happy, and for the first time ever, he stands up for others. He calls out the school for taking the hard work of teachers for granted and quits his job before storming out. He then heads straight to Allie's school and sees her put on a boring performance on a boring song. It turns out Allie wanted to perform a Big Sean song with Campbell, but he vetoed the song. The performance was important to Allie because she wanted to prove a point to her bullies. Campbell feels terrible. So he immediately goes over to Maggie and asks her to get the DJ to play the Big Sean song. 
He then talks to Allie and apologizes to her for being late. After this, the two go on the stage together to perform. The song is revealed to be I Don't Frick With You, and it's dedicated to Allie's bullies. Campbell is taken aback, but he goes along and the two deliver a spectacular performance. A teacher eventually cuts off the music, but the rest of the kids love Allie's performance, and Campbell is proud of his daughter standing up to her bullies. With a newfound confidence, Campbell then goes to school to fight Strickland. The students are proud of him for showing up, and they cheer on as the fight begins. Strickland punches Campbell and knocks him out, but the latter gets back up and gets some good swings in. He then bites Strickland's leg and injures him with a stapler. However, Strickland eventually gets back at him and starts chasing him around the school. Campbell manages to get hold of a fire extinguisher and sprays Strickland with it before whacking him over the head with it, taking him down. He seemingly wins and the students and staff cheer him on, but suddenly Strickland gets back up and knocks him out. Next, Campbell's phone starts to ring, and Strickland wakes his opponent up to inform him that Maggie is going into labor. He then pulls Campbell up and takes him to the hospital. In the next scene, Campbell goes to Maggie's room to meet with her. He explains everything to her about how he stood up for his friends and himself by quitting his job. Maggie is proud of him, and she soon delivers the baby. After two weeks, the Campbells host a barbecue and invite all of Andy's friends. It's then revealed that Campbell's fight with Strickland went viral, and it brought to attention the corruption of the school board. As a result, the school is pressured into bringing Campbell and Strickland back. The principal then arrives at the barbecue unannounced and asks both Campbell and Strickland to return to work. Campbell agrees, but on the condition that the school rehires all his friends that were laid off without any reason. The movie ends up with Campbell and Strickland returning back to school and disciplining two students for fighting. After sending the bully to detention, the two teachers then head off to teach their new classes.